A relatively simple way to create graphene out of plastic could lead to cheap, wearable nanoelectronics. We'll tell you about it this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for December 17th, 2014. I'm Justine Murphy. And I'm James Lowe. On this week's show, we'll explore how lasers can transform cheap plastic film into a versatile kind of graphene. We'll also introduce you to the finalists for this year's PRISM Award in Biomedical Instrumentation. But first, stories on 3D nano patterning, spray-on solar cells, and disease-targeting dyes. Fluorescent dyes aid bioimaging every day, but they could also play an active therapeutic role. Researchers from Friedrich Schiller University and the Jena University Hospital use nanoparticles coated with near-infrared fluorescent polymethene dyes to infiltrate and interfere with cholesterol production in the livers of test animals. The dyes mimic a cellular transporter of liver epithelial cells, so most of the nanoparticles were absorbed into the liver. There, the nanoparticles released small interfering RNA molecules, which prevented hepatocyte cells from releasing cholesterol into the bloodstream. The researchers said this approach could be used to find and switch off genes associated with diseases. They started a business, Smart Dye Livery, to develop the technology for clinical use, especially in cases of acute septic infections. Their work was published in Nature Communications. A sprayable solution containing light-sensitive quantum dots can be used to turn virtually any surface into a solar absorber. On a surface the size of an average car roof, the coating could produce enough energy to power three 100-watt light bulbs or 24 compact fluorescents, according to researchers at the University of Toronto. Described in applied physics letters, the spray LD technique yielded devices with an average power conversion efficiency of 6.7%. It could become an inexpensive way to incorporate solar cells into existing manufacturing processes using readily available parts like spray nozzles and airbrushes. Every week until Photonics West, Light Matters will be bringing you short profiles of the finalists for the PRISM Awards. The awards are presented every year at Photonics West by SPIE and Photonics Media. They recognize innovative, light-based technology products that solve problems and improve quality of life. This week we'll take a look at the Biomedical Instrumentation finalists, BacterioScan, ClearBridge Biophotonics, and Tama Wave Laboratories. The Laser Microbial Growth Monitor from St. Louis-based BacterioScan is a tool for clinical diagnostic microbiology. It can also be used to test water quality and the effectiveness of antibiotics. The four-year scope from ClearBridge Biophotonics in Singapore enables ticographic microscopy, which combines multiple small images to produce one large, high-resolution image without optical aberrations. And the laser optoacoustic imaging system from Houston-based Tama Wave Laboratories can scan small animals and tissue simulations to provide anatomical and functional 3D images. Tune in next week to learn about the finalists in the detectors and sensors category. You can also find out more at photonicsprismawards.com. What were the biggest photonic stories of 2014? You tell us. Email us your nominations at lightmatters at photonics.com or tweet us using the hashtag photonics2014. We'd love to have your input for our December 31st episode, where we'll present a roundup of the year's most exciting research and industry news. Still ahead, 3D nanolithography and laser-induced graphene. After the show, check out the expanded resources for students, educators, and everyone at edu.photonics.com. A photolithography technique using nanospheres could make fabrication of 3D biomedical and photonic structures easier and less expensive. Existing nanolithography procedures use a variety of expensive techniques that require specialized lenses, mechanical probes, electron beams, or lasers to focus light on a photosensitive film when creating 2D patterns. To create 3D structures, numerous 2D patterns must be printed on top of each other. The new technique involves illuminating nanoscale polystyrene spheres with UV light to produce hollow core 3D nanostructures on photosensitive film in just one step. Researchers at North Carolina State University said the nanospheres self-assemble in a regularly spaced array, allowing the creation of uniform patterns. The researchers controlled the nanolithography process by altering the sphere's size and the duration, angle, wavelength, and polarization of the incident light. Their work was published in Small. Scanning across a sheet of polymer, an infrared CO2 laser creates working electrical circuits and capacitors that could someday find their way into flexible or wearable electronics. Laser-induced graphene was developed at Rice University. The technique works by rearranging carbon atoms in the polymer into a sort of graphene foam about 20 microns thick. Because the laser doesn't cut all the way through, 
the graphene remains attached to the polymer sheet. On a molecular level, laser-induced graphene is irregular. Compared to the perfect honeycomb structure of typical graphene, you could call it defective. But according to Rice professor Dr. Boris Jakobson, these defects are what give laser-induced graphene the heightened conductivity and capacitance that make it suitable for use in electronic devices. The research was published in Nature Communications. That's it for this week's show, and don't forget to let us know what you think were the biggest photonic stories of this year. You can reach us at lightmatters at photonics.com or by using the Twitter hashtag photonics2014. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we hope you have a wonderful festival of lights.